This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Well, hey there. Hey there, Heidi. Ho there. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is not the. This is not what we were hoping to be doing. <laughs> we'd, well, we'd, you know. Well, we like doing the episodes, but like we weren't expecting quite to go live this quickly. But it seems to be the recurring thing. December is the oh, November and December is the month of like back to backs. Well, that's actually not what I mean. I meant the, we were hoping that we were going to have a guest. <laughs> oh yes, well, we were yes. <laughs> And, uh, and so I had to scramble and uh, do something last week, which was uh, me posting the 22 tables Gottlieb's that are going to be on the uh, Ad Games unit. And mm. a, uh, just because I felt like, man, eh, let's put something out. and and Let's actually do some gameplay video. Yeah, gameplay, gameplay video. You know. <laughs> and uh, we were hoping, hoping that maybe the delay of of uh, not being able to, to line it up last week with Mel, that uh, maybe by now we would have a new lineup, and still not the case. We're gonna we're gonna get into that in a little bit. Uh, we'll have to just pin that. For now. Yes, we'll pin that yes. exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, you know, holidays are coming. Yay! I you know, oh yeah, just put up the tree today. <laughs> oh, oh really? Kim, my wife, had put up a tree late November. She says, you know what? This year sucks. Let's have Christmas now. <laughs> and, and I need some Christmas tree. I need something to make this year not suck. Yeah, no, it, uh, it's one of those things. We don't like putting it up until December. Yeah. And then based on when the weekend hit, it was like, I don't want to do it this weekend. So then it fell onto this weekend now. Yeah. So. Well, you know, 13th of December or 12th of December, or whenever you put it up a couple of days ago, that's that's reasonable. Like it's December. Uh, I, I think we've put it up know. later. <laughs> oh, really? Like just in time for Santa to put those little presents under the tree. <laughs> yep, yep. That that has happened. Um, yeah. There was there was one year where we got the tree up and I put the lights on and just kind of went. Uh, yeah, let's not put up the ornaments. <laughs> let's just. You know, I think the there's you can buy LEDs now that are that good that they will actually do patterns, like LED patterns going up the tree. Like uh, I've seen them on, you know, all the promoted ads that I get on Instagram now. Um, and uh, it, these look pretty good, man. I don't think you need a lot of ornaments if you have these things running on your tree. My problem is that, and, and I've got to do it again. I've got all the lights up except for the very top because I ran out of strands. Why do I run out of strands? Because every single year, all my lights are working. I pack them up. I put them in the box. The next year, I pull them out of the box. I plug them in, and half the lights are out. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I yep. don't understand why. What happened? Um, last year, I was went, got silly about it and actually checked all the bulbs to try and make... Because literally, I think half my strands were uh, only partially working. And I was like, okay, wow. this is this is dumb. And some of them I know for a fact were the ones that I'd bought the previous year. And that's uh, really weird. Yeah. You, it's not like you're like mistreating or tangling, because if no. you're anything like me, you'd be putting them very carefully back in a very organized way in a box. I make a loop. <laughs> and then I put them in a box. <laughs> okay. But I'm not just gonna... crunching them and you know dumping them in. And just dumping them in. Yeah. So they're a big rat's nest, basically. Right. Yeah. No, there's yeah. there there's a degree of method to your madness. Yes, yes, yeah, a degree. But the but that's why I'm saying I don't understand what happens in that time period. And the thing is, is like when I went and checked the bulbs, there weren't that many that were dead, and mm. I would replace them with real ones, and still the light strand wouldn't. And so it's like something in the wire. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, as, oh, I just get LED ones. Like, are yours LED or yeah, incandescent? Mine are LED. Mine are LED. Yeah. But as is the case of uh, every year, I need to go out and buy yet another strand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have a big tree or sort of? Well, I guess big is hard to to find. How big is your tree in height? I believe it is six and a half feet. Right. Okay. I think that sounds about the size as ours because we've got high ceilings here. We've got nine foot ceilings. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think that that's about the size of ours, and we've got a I think a two hundred strand light string. Um. 
we it's funny like kim is in charge of the decorations i'm not really super christmasy when it comes to decorations and stuff like that um i enjoy looking at them but i have no interest in setting them up <laughs> at all yeah um so like i'll just i'll admire the tree i go that looks really nice but yeah don't involve me in setting it up because it just makes me cranky <laughs> um, <clears throat> i really am the grinch when it comes to that sort of thing um so uh this year it's just white white lights that don't blink they just stay on they're just really basic but last a couple of other years we had like lights that are like full-on multicolored, and they strobe and we found that the blue ones they actually made the place look like a shooting gallery like if they oh, were wow. you know as in a drug shooting gallery like that <laughs> it was like that they were that blue that you could have a blue light disco in there yeah and and it was like all your shirts would glow you know like this shirt would be like super like glowy nice. um and it was so like the the strobing of the lights was so intense it was like sitting in the middle of a pinball machine during multiball like it was so bright and we just said no we can't have that this year again like it's too it's too intense like the random motors is too intense yeah so uh hey merry christmas all and happy hanukkah <laughs> that's right because this may be the last episode before christmas Probably official official like, episode. episode yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. i've got a plan to entertain you all and kind of entertain myself and let mm. jared off the hook for if he needs a weekend off now and then, because he does. Because I do. <laughs> because uh, let me explain the reason why Chris is having to do this. So, the Netherworld for the first time all year is running a Little Monsters event, and the Little Monsters event is a chance for all the kids to go along to Netherworld, who normally could not go to Netherworld because they're too young, um, to go there before the pub opens and um, get a bag of tokens and go to blips and shits <laughs> and and go crazy and have fun. So, uh, yeah, I, they've been pestering me for ages. Go, oh, when is the next Little Monsters on? Can we go? And I said, like, well, now's your chance. Let's go do it. And it's school holidays. So that's why next Sunday is no can do for recording. So what are you going to do, Chris? So here's the plan. Because apparently people like watching gameplay videos, <laughs> and mm. which is, I don't know, it's a mystery to me. I enjoy playing. I'm not much for watching. Uh, but I've now done this a few times, and each time those videos have gotten quite a lot of views. So mm. I thought I would start a new series of play here. We're going to call this 10-Minute Pinball. Mm. And what it will be is I will play one particular table for 10 minutes. And my current idea is that uh, it's just what is the high score I can get within that 10 minutes. If I'm out within three minutes, I start it back up again and, and try. Or if I'm just blazing on the table, I stop right at 10 minutes. And that'll be it. That'll be my high score. My question becomes, though, a factor of, should I have different rules? Uh, you know, should it be a thing where, hey, I only get one chance at this. Uh, can I, if I'm playing on FX3, can I use upgrades and, you know, the 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 wizard upgrade and the passive upgrades, or do mm -hmm. I only have to play it straight? Um, obviously, this can vary and change, and I think I will kind of leave it up to the audience as to what that's going to be. The way I'll do this, though, is in one sitting, I'll probably do five different tables, but they're mm -hmm. all going to be either five tables from Zen, five tables from TPA, or five tables from Zachariah because it's yeah. really hard to switch between programs and still have the broadcast feeding. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah. So but you need to like pick pick your um pick your program. Yeah. So, so set it up right. Yeah. Right. So it'll be uh, pick the program and then within that pick five tables, and I would like you, the audience, to determine what those are going to be, and while you're so it'll be. Post your five tables that you want me to play. Post them to our uh, Twitter account, at Blockade. Uh, and whichever one gets the most likes, that'll probably be the one that I do. And if you want to create your own rules for me within that 10 minute, uh, I'd be I'd be fine with that. 
Mm. I would even be willing to, you know, piece, uh, put a piece of, you know, tape a piece of paper over my flippers on the screen if you want to be play blind pinball. Um, not that that would translate oh, necessarily. Mode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tommy mode. <laughs> you know, what I reckon you should do. You should do um, shaky cam video demo mode and only play with one flipper. Uh, <laughs> and all you could do is just play with one flipper while holding um, the webcam. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep, that, that's how you play. Uh, that's how, that's how real people players play. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, anyway, and then and then I will. So when I do those, though, the 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 five tables in a row, that will be live streaming, like I did on the Gottlieb. And so yeah. you guys can comments will be flowing up there for all to see and uh, you know, feel free to rag on me and entertain me while I'm doing this because I find that when I'm playing I don't do so well at talking and playing at the same time like mm. they both kind of suffer <laughs> yeah I think you know heavy heavy narration while you're playing is really hard it's um, really I think, you know the odd reaction to what the ball's doing like I see you know I actually decided to watch a full stream of Rick and Morty that Dead Flip did the other day just because I needed to understand how to actually get the wizard pin at Netherworld because they got they got a wizard pin that you need to get 20 million on that game and that is not easy <laughs> so I went how can I get this wizard pin I need to watch Dead Flip playing it and through doing that and watching him live stream um, I, I find that he's very much the same like he doesn't tend to commentate a lot during a ball but what he'll do is he will play a ball and then when it drains he'll then flick over to the comments and interact with the community that way and then when he's finished doing that he'll then switch back into gameplay again and that right. works really well that's a right. really nice balance so that so that's the plan that's what uh what I'm proposing to do, we I will do it. So obviously next week, uh, Jared's already out. So I'll just log it in mm. right now uh, on that Saturday. What is that? Saturday the 18th at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard. I'll be going live and playing five tables. And you guys can uh, jump in and comment as well. Uh, if I don't see any comments <laughs> throughout the week, which I know you guys in the pinball community sometimes are reticent to join in on community functions uh, to determine these kind of things, I'll, I'll wind up picking some tables myself. But otherwise... Uh, I reckon you should have a, like, pick a ra random set of rules out of a hat. Just have the hat ready to go. And then just, just randomize it. Like, just randomize it. Thing. Yeah, I reckon. That'd be pretty cool. All right. So, you know, if you don't want to pick the tables for me, maybe write some rules that you think I can uh, throw into a, a random hat. Anyway, that's going to... Make them really horrible for Chris, please, <laughs> everyone. Like, make them horrible. Like, you know, have you just swap flippers around and stuff like that. That'd be great. Uh, how am I going to swap flippers around? If you just hold your control like that. Oh, upside <laughs> down? Yeah. <laughs> no, you use your pin controller, man. Like, yeah. use that thing sit behind you. Like, yeah, you that know. doesn't... Well, no, that one... I can't use it for streams because of how my cameras are set up and everything it, it's really, oh, right. I've tried it's really difficult to it's really difficult like yeah that, <laughs> that uh, just seems like a convenient excuse to me but <laughs> 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 anyway and then I will post uh, the actual 10 minute clips I mean they're going to be a little bit longer but that's going to be the idea of, of each individual table that'll be you know mini episodes all, all throughout mm -hmm. the week so if you don't want to if you're not there for the live all of them in a row stream, that's going to be the only time that you're going to be able to see that because as soon as I'm done recording that, I'm taking that that's offline all. and yeah. chopping it up. So that'll be the so only be time. Be square. Yeah. So <laughs> if, you, if you want to be part of the, the full live long play experience, that will be the only way that you'll be able to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to have to watch a bunch of the uh, smaller vids, which... Mm works in our favor is what we're doing <laughs> yeah well that's right it, it's it's definitely good um yeah so on the the whole idea of the smaller vids thing chris um my my lightning talk from right the docs 2020 is now up so i decided uh, like people coerced me into doing a lightning talk which is like a five minute talk no preparation just jump in and talk about something okay and and what i chose to talk about is exactly what what you're doing with the videos and what we're like the show's experimenting with length and stuff like that because it really has resulted in much better um much better viewing 
um, than long longer episodes. As the data proves it. Yeah, because so. basically, a uh, little inside baseball for those that are just purely YouTube viewers and not content people. Uh, mm. When it comes to viewership of any video, I mean, this is for pretty much anybody out there. You're happy if 30 to 40% of your video actually gets viewed. Mm. Um, a more standard number is about 20 to 25% of your video actually getting viewed. It really is surprisingly low. Yeah. And what I found is with our mini episodes that we're probably getting close to 50% of the video. Which is viewed. massive. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other interesting aspect is all of you that are subscribers tend to watch our full-length episode and like literally 60% of the viewers are subscribers when it comes to our full-length videos. And then you flip the coin over to our mini episodes and it's maybe 20% are subscribers and everybody else is non-subscribers. So getting there organically based on what YouTube is throwing them up. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, there's all sorts of kind of wacky things at play, but obviously there's an audience for all of it, and that's what we're trying to uh, to appeal to. Is mm. you know, I've I myself personally have found that every day when I'm eating lunch, or I don't know if I'm just sitting, if I got a few minutes to kill in front of the TV or whatever, I'll throw on YouTube and try and find something, and mm. I do find myself trending towards the shorter videos. So I I get it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> It's true. Like they're they're lunch break friendly, and that's what people want yeah. these days. They they don't want to sit through an hour. Like even with the other podcasts I do, the uh, Write the Docs podcast, we've had on numerous occasions people going, "Oh, geez, an hour is so long." But this is only an audio format podcast. It's just pause it and come back to it, <laughs> right? <laughs> like video is a bit different. And I get that. And but... we started out as audio only, and then we shifted mm. into video, and you know. Yeah, you you adapt or whatever, but anyway, that's yeah. that's kind of the the impetus and like Jared said, the data proves. Yeah, but, the data don't lie when it comes to that sort of thing. All right, so some of you may have noticed that you're not going to have as merry a Christmas as you hoped for because your mm. arcade one-up pinball cabinet will not be, in fact, showing up under the tree. In fact, no. you got a notice saying it ain't showing up until February, which is a right bummer. <laughs> it's, it's a massive turd under the Christmas tree, isn't it, really? It is, and uh. there turns out to be a very good reason for that, and I'll just bring up this uh, official post from Arcade 1-Up. Oops, that's the cargo ship that was delivering a lot of their product, and as you can see, it's tossed this way and that. Um, There's got a few problems. I think someone didn't quite stack things right there. Well, it is a rather major right storm. Uh, here's another uh, more dramatic picture. Um, dominoes went toppling. I think they said they lost or damaged almost 2,000 containers. It's it's like it's a chaos on that boat. Like they like you can see how much the containers are actually listing over to the left. Yeah, how much cargo they lost. Yeah. Like that's like that back row, it's like pretty much half of the back row is just over the side for it to topple like that. So, if you were wondering uh, why the delay, there's a pretty good reason. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not COVID, it's not accessibility to parts. No, it's literally the containers are now claimed by Davy Jones, and he's really enjoying all those pinball machines that you ordered. So, that though means I don't know. For a fact, but it doesn't seem like the Legends pinball is shipping before Christmas. No, I don't think the. I get the feeling. Again, we don't know because no one talks to us. But <laughs> um, the uh, the Legends pinball was in a pre-order lottery phase, so that doesn't necessarily. I think they go into the lottery and then they allocate units. No one that I've heard in the At Games community has yet received any shipping confirmation. So they're still in that, yeah, we're, we're probably still building them phase, would be my guess. Please do correct us if someone else has other information available, because we don't. <laughs> Which means that of the four pinball cabs that were coming out this year, the two that everybody was most looking forward to 
mm, uh, coming out in 2020. <laughs> and instead, right. and we're not even 100% sure Well Played is supposed to now come out December 15th, I believe is when it was shipping. Uh, mm. But that's it's already been delayed one time. So yep. we'll see if that happens. Otherwise, the one that has been actually shipping is the Toy Shock 12 and 1 that was mm. the same one that was from last year. That's right. And you can go and order those now, I believe. I don't think you can actually pick them up in retail stores um, like Walmart or Walmart, but you can go and order them um, and they will ship. Yeah, and I just, I just checked. They're saying it was shipped by December 19th if you ordered it yeah. today on December 12th. So. so there you go. If you are absolutely gagging for a digital pinball machine and you don't care, then you can go <laughs> order a Toy Shock. I just, I just really find it funny though that the uh, the two that were on everybody's least list are going to be the only ones available. It's like, well, yeah. they're, they're probably still on people's least list, but they <laughs> at least you can buy them, right? So if if you want something to tide you over until um, February or whenever. Um, go go out and and get some Gottlieb action. I mean, the, you know, for the for the person who wants to buy a, a Toy Shock or well played, um, they're, they're certainly the right price. Like you can get a pinball experience for um not many not many clams, but at the same time they're not going to be they're not going to hold up well when these other cabinets come in. Um, so you're saying yeah. you might have buyer's remorse. Oh, just just a little bit. Although, if you're a kid, you probably won't because you'll love it. And if you know, we know that Toy Shock is aimed at the um, the younger generation, um, so not us old people pinheads. Um, so you know, if you're a kid and you see that underneath the tree, and you, you know, you, I reckon you'd be pretty happy. Sure. Because um, so, you're you're not going to be getting a PS5 or xbox well S no, or whatever like, those is. are on titanium those <laughs> are still on titanium so you may as well get a pinball machine and have some fun like at least it's a video game right right so anyway just want to uh highlight and update everybody on that uh what the uh, situation was because i wanted to confirm i didn't even like when i first saw the post and with somebody had posted the picture of the ship i was like Okay, is that just an excuse or is that really the deal? And then yeah. one up actually posted it to their official was, website and went, okay, it's yeah. the real deal then. <laughs> I, I saw it pretty early on um, in all of the, uh, the, the, all the channels, all the so, like social media rooms. I mean, I went, mm, okay, that's, it's, it could be the case. Uh, but yeah, you can't deny it now <laughs> when it's nope. officially announced. So then me and Jared were like, well, what the hell are we going to talk about? Because, mm. you know, that's all just a bit depressing. And, you it know, is. to be fair, this entire year has been. So we're done with yeah, this. Yeah. We're, we're done yeah. with this year, right? We've it's, had enough of it. It's to say sayonara to, uh, <laughs> to 2020 and say, please don't let the door hit your butt on the way out. And why not make some crazy predictions about 2021? Sure, that sounds this like is, a good idea. This is the lifeblood of Blarcade, after all. So we should absolutely end the year, potentially, officially, on this note. It makes so much sense. Yes. So that's yeah. what we're going to do. Me and Jared are going to make our predictions for 2021 mm. about pinball in general. Mm -hmm. uh, digital pinball in general, unless, well, at least I'm doing pin. Uh, we haven't discussed this with each other. What we're what we're going to predict? Um, we know we know two of the things. We yeah, just because we figured it was going to be close, we might yeah. overlap, and we didn't want to overlap necessarily. Um, the other three, they're all off record, and we're going to be surprising each other. Yes. I think. Yes. <laughs> in this so, segment. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be uh, making our pinball predictions for the year 2021. Uh, the first category is that which we are most confident about, that we're saying you can take this to the bank. And yep. uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to go ahead and go first. And that is, you can take this to the bank, folks. In 2021, I believe Zen will announce at least two licensed William Tables coming out in 2021. I'm not saying two licensed packs. I'm just saying at least two licensed tables, fully licensed right. DMD tables. That is my bold blockade guaranteed stamp. Ta-da! There you go. Lock it in, right? What do you think, Jared? Uh, sound, so for me... Does that sound, I mean, a fair 
Oh yeah, I, I think I reckon you could absolutely take that to the bank. There's going to be two licensed Belly Williams tables. Like you got to remember that like, when when we say licensed, like I had a like when I was going through this process, I had to be really careful about what I picked um, because so many of them are licensed. So it's getting to the point with the Belly Williams tables that there's only a couple left that aren't actually license heavy. Um, so they're going to have to sh- uh, like switch into license mode this year for sure. And with their recent acquisition, um, they're going to have the money to do it. Yep. So, you know, th- I think your prediction is very sound and it will absolutely happen. Okay. So Jared, what is your prediction that we can take to the bank? Okay. I think in 2021, Zen will release at least two Zen original DLC packages based on pop culture franchises. Are you saying beyond Mandalorian that has already been announced? Um, or yes. In, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think, you, so we know there's going to be Mandalorian, but we don't know if there's going to be others. I'm predicting there will be others based on that, and there's also going to be one more. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. There we go. All right. Sounds reasonable enough. Uh, Jared, we're going to let you take the next one to start off, too. These are probably going to happen in 2021, but don't hold us to it. Um, it's just we we have a hunch this kind of thing might happen. So, Jared, uh, why don't yep. you take it away on that one? Okay. So, my number two relates to cabinets. And I think in 2021, RK1UP will offer an upgrade PCB for the first wave customers to upgrade their um, uh, cabinets that are receiving in February to Wi-Fi supported. Okay. It will probably it'll probably be next Christmas, but I think they will. Okay. So mm. this is the bold prediction Jared made a little while ago. Well, no, your bold prediction was that there was also going to be a second screen. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> that was a real bold prediction. That was but a I real think bold this, prediction. But this is your more realistic, is... probably happening... Prediction. I think it's plausible, given that given that we know that they're already considering wave two, um, and I think that things will move faster okay. than we were originally predicting. Interestingly enough, mine is somewhat similar, but we diverge. So we're going to see potentially who who is right on this because I am predicting mm-hmm. that One Up and Zen they're going to put out a Jurassic Park slash universal pinball uh universal you know the studio uh cabinet so it'll be the three jurassic park tables plus back to the future um jaws and et oh yeah and that'd be a pretty so that's what fillers and i and i and probably probably some fillers but it'll be i believe a Mm. jurassic park themed cab um however i do not believe that there is going to be any change to the hardware specs from what the three that have been announced are going to be. And Mm. the only change that will actually happen, if at all, will be that with the Star Wars and Marvel cabs that you'll be able to purchase and load onto the table the remaining titles uh, that are out for those two franchises. And that's it. If you have the, the... uh, Attack from Mars one? Nope, it's just going to be those 10. And I think that by 2021 holiday, uh, you're going to have those four cabs. They're all going to be essentially wave one. Uh, no Wi-Fi, no upgrades whatsoever. That's my prediction. And then based on what they released this year, then you're going to have wave two with potentially like other stuff on it, like maybe the back box, maybe like Wi-Fi. Right. That, I'm just saying that's not going to be in 2021. That's my prediction. I think that's probably, given how disruptive 2021 has been. You mean 2020? Uh, uh, yeah, 2020 has been. I think that's probably fair to say. I think they'll want to really test the market with the ones they've got out and experiment with the hardware and see what they can actually work out and then plan out, yeah, 2022's line of cabinets based on that. So. As a, as a an ad, not an addendum uh, an addition to this prediction, I don't think At Games is going to be changing a thing about their Legends pinball in twenty twenty one. So I literally think that everything that you're seeing released now 
is going to be the exact same thing through all of 2021. You're not going to see any differences. And I believe that even goes to Well Played um, and Toy Shock. I don't think we're seeing that wave two from Toy Shock. Um, uh, no. So. No. I think they're unfortunately dead in the yeah. water with wave two. So there is a, there is an extra prediction, but that's just wild speculation. Um, moving yeah. on to number three. I'll take this one first. Number three okay, cool. uh, for our predictions of 2021. Uh, these will fall in the the. Hey, that'd be nice, but come on, it's not really. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> we're 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 kind of stepping out on a limb here. And then Jared has no idea what my prediction here is, and this is it. Yeah, I predict that Zen licenses from Planetary Pinball, the Williams approved updated code that they are coming out with for yeah. Junkyard Creature and roadshow that's my it would be really nice but i doubt that's going to happen yeah so you're saying that they would actually put that new code into their current builds for those tables correct as an option <clears throat> uh it would be in a it would be you would have two two choices of of play basically do you want to play with the new code or do you want to play with the classic code I'm trying to think, like with the planetary pinball um, ones, I'm trying to remember if they're going to be radically different rule sets to the originals or whether it's going to be more bug fix and minor improvements. To I believe balance. it's bug fixes. I know like with Junkyard, it literally makes it so that the uh, shoot the dog, is either chase the dog or shoot the dog, only happens like once <laughs> per game. Oh, Good. That, that's actually an improvement right there. Right. Because that's just a terrible mode. Um, so, I mean, I think it, I think it's changes of that nature. Uh, things that would probably make the tables a little more fun competitively. Um, mm. You know, so I don't think it's radical rule changes at all. And these are approved by Williams. So it's not just some scattershot fringe code. This has actually gotten the thumbs up. Yeah, you can actually they're down here in Australia. You can there's already a reseller selling the ROMs. Yeah, so you can buy fresh ROMs straight into your machine. Your job's done. Yes, but and again, yeah. would Zen do it? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> They've mm. been made aware. I think they're already kind of going. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice themselves. So anyway, that's that's where I come down. Jared, what is your number? What is your would be nice? But come on. Well, look, would be nice, but but you know, come on. It's a Zen Studios will announce in 2021 that they have partnered with Jersey Jack to <laughs> reproduce their, their earlier, earlier out of production titles in a new standalone pinball platform. I say earlier because Wizard of Oz and what's the other one? Wizard Hobbit. of Oz, dialed in Hobbit. That era is, I think, possible to do. Um, I think something to the order of uh, <laughs> Guns N' Roses is 100% off your rocker crazy <laughs> to do at this stage. Okay. But I think that it would be nice, but come on. Right? <laughs> We're probably not going to have it, but would it be nice? The only reason why I, I really potentially think that that's going to be difficult is you need the second monitor. And there's not enough yeah. real estate on a single monitor to have the whole pinball table and then that whole back glass playing at the same time. Yeah, that is definitely a technical concern. Like they're like they would have to radically rethink how that monitor worked. Yeah, um, because it is so integral to the game. You have so much stuff up on that second monitor. They really have utilized it to maximum effect. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's my yeah uh, probably not. Alrighty. <laughs> well, uh, while you're at it. Uh, we're going to move on to our fourth prediction for what's going to happen in 2021. That fourth prediction uh, is under the category of, well, that's just silly talk. So, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I've got one for you. And, it and, falls under that category. <laughs> yes. So please, Jared, inform me. What's what's just plain silly talk? Sorry, excuse me for like glancing out the window. It is hammering down with rain here at the moment. <laughs> and I'm just wondering if you can hear that through the broadcast. I don't yeah, I actually can a little bit. I can hear. I might just close the window. Just stand by. Okay, <laughs> standing by so that Jared can uh, take care of the flood that is imminent coming into his house. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Okay. That's a little better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, silly talk. In the category of that's just silly talk. <laughs> Arcade 1UP decide that given importing product to regions outside of the US costs so much, they produce an all-in-one arcade and pinball controller accessory, quite similar to the one that's behind you there, Chris. Then they partner with software partners like Zen and someone else to produce the Arcade 1UP VR Games Room with virtual creations of all their arcade cabs and pinball cabs. <laughs> wow. that's And this is all going that to happen in 2021. No, they're going to announce this in 2020. Oh, the announcement like, will be 2020. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be able to do this in 2021. That takes a lot of a lot of engineering. But you know, they're going to start promoting this probably about I don't know, midway, like quarter two, quarter three, um, in uh, 2021. And it's going to be, think of it, you know, like in Animal Crossing, people are setting up their virtual arcades. Well, think of it a little bit like Animal Crossing, but for arcade one-up games. You're going to have like a a virtual room that you can walk through, walk up to a game, and then. Given that Quest 2 has hands mode, you can actually see your hands in front of you and okay. interacting. You, the, your hands will actually be on the controller. And you'll be able to see yourself pushing the buttons and stuff like that. So it's going to be less less of a jarring thing where you don't see your hands in, the, in, in context of where you are in the game. So it will mean that, you know, I think I predict in this silly talk prediction that each cabinet that you buy in the game will be a premium cost, like 25 bucks. And probably fifty bucks for pinball, but by doing this, if you have a small house, you can amass a huge collection of games for about the cost of one cabinet's RRP. Yeah, so that's, just, tell it, that's uh, just silly talk. That's a silly talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's fantastic, but it's silly talk. All right, let's see how you uh, how you th what do you think of mine? Uh, okay. My that's just silly talk prediction for twenty twenty one. Magic Pixel, makers of Zachary at Pinball. Mm -hmm. Magic Pixel buys the license for the entire Gottlieb catalog, as well as Spooky Pinball's catalog, with the help of At Games, basically helping to finance them so that At Spot Games has buy. all these. Um, and in the process, they just toss Farsight aside like yesterday's trash. At Games does. Uh, <laughs> and fully throws their support be behind Magic Pixel. Oh, that's... I don't know if that's silly talk or not, Chris. <laughs> like, that... <laughs> but who would they get to develop? Who would they get to develop the Spooky Pimble games? That that's would be question. that would no, that would be uh, Magic Pixel. Magic Pixel takes over all that. Oh, Magic Pixel will do it. Yeah, so would Magic, Magic Pixel does their own version of Gottlieb, and would mm -hmm. also uh, have Spooky Pinball as uh, that they would be doing the exact same thing, translating all of their tables digitally. That would be silly talk but also excellent at the same time <laughs> i know because we've yeah. talked many a time about how we think that magic pixel would be perfect for the gottlieb license um, yeah that they would do and it, they would they, they would do go, it justice they would they would absolutely wring every single last cent out of that license like they've done with zacharia and that would result in some pretty cool stuff and there are out, hundreds retail. of gottlieb machines yeah, EMs that they could actually go and completely like take the profile layouts and the stuff on them and rethink them. Like it would just be, it would make Gottlieb's relevant again in this right. market if they did it. But it's right. silly talk. It's silly talk. And it's silly talk. Unless, of course, Ad Games helps finance it for Magic Pixel. Um... Magic Pixel are now essentially that they would become, as part of the silly talk discussion, the principal pinball developer for their platform. Correct. Correct. It actually makes more sense than silly, but anyhow, <laughs> um, I, I think I think that would be um, a, a good outcome. Yeah. All right. Um, now then, we come to our final prediction here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is our you're just playing off your freaking rocker uh, yeah. <laughs> predictions. Uh, Jared, do you want me to go first, or do you want to take this? Yeah. Look, I'll go first in this one. Okay. So. So you've got to be off your freaking rocker if you think Stern Pinball realizes they need to go all in on virtual pinball and repurpose their the pin range and their pin range format as a digital pinball offering on a network connected 40 inch cabinet with a live black box. They announced Farsight as a content partner who co-announced a brand new pinball engine based on hybrid visual pinball X technology. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. How about that? How about that? <laughs> okay, break that down for me a little bit, Jared. Sure. Yeah, let's do that, shall we? <laughs> okay. So, first off, you're saying Stern would take their $2,000 home pin thing that they've got, yep. right? And they're going to convert mm -hmm. that to digital. Is that what I'm hearing? Basically, yeah. So they're going to convert all of the different variant tables that they released on the pin range. That's like Transformers, Spider-Man, Star Wars. And they're going to make each one of those tables available as a digital pinball offering. Okay. So that's part one. Yeah, part, part two one. is they are would partner with Farsight to yeah. make this a reality. Yeah. Um, but because, what, what... because, you know, of Farsight's pedigree with Stern Pinball. Right. Um, <laughs> which is silly. Uh, <laughs> and what is this other, what's this platform that you're talking about? So the Farsight basically throw out their current pinball engine, which they should have done 10 years ago, um, and co announced that their brand new pinball engine to support the, the, uh, the Stern, uh, the pin range, digital, the pin range is based on a hybrid visual pinball X technology. So okay. they're going to basically buy Visual Pinball X to license on these cabinets and make some tweaks to it so it's super unique just for Stern and use their physics model to, to basically play the pinball on these cabinets. There you go. All righty. <laughs> you said you wanted to be off the freaking rocker. I delivered. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Interestingly <laughs> enough... <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, well, not necessarily thinking the same direction, but just watch this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that Stern <laughs> signs a deal with Zen to mm -hmm. bring all of their Spike 2 tables into the digital realm, but they will be exclusively for arcade one-up cabs. And the price for each of these mm -hmm. will only have one title on the cab, and it'll be 800 bucks. Ooh. That's very interesting. So all of those tables that use the video screen now that uh, Stern has been doing, so it's that larger mm -hmm. screen, that would be up on your your back box. That's all the Spike 2 stuff. Um, yeah. But it would be the current then Stern items uh, rather than going terribly older. And yeah, but it, you'd only get that one title. So it's kind of like what you're saying with the, uh, with the pin. Yeah. That's that idea, but now at a price point that's a little more reasonable, and yeah. you know. But so we were. <laughs> that's kind of funny that our off your that's freaking rockers are relatively in the, the same, same. realm. <laughs> that, that's because we're both quite crazy. Um, <laughs> so and, it, and this proves it. Um, I think yours is very interesting to explore though, because you know. If you like look at the current price point of of uh, the RK One Up Pinball, and looking at you know what you would expect the premium to be from Stern to go into this, you know it makes makes quite a bit of sense to actually do that and have one title per cabinet, which fits in with the RK One Up model of like only a few select titles per cabinet, um, and then. So what would that go back to? Like, from a catalog perspective... Batman 66? Is there anything before Batman 66 that used that monitor? I don't think so. I think it might be Batman 66, and that was the first. But, yeah, they wouldn't do Batman 66. So that, that carried a colossal a colossal license. So, And that wasn't even officially a... Spike two, I think since then they've they've converted or whatever they're building has been converted into a Spike two system. Mm. But uh, that's kind of I I don't know what do you well, Wrestle, WrestleMania WrestleMania was actually Spike one, so Spike right. two in like so back then there was still in fact even well one of the first the pin models was actually a, a predecessor of Spike. Because they were testing the market. I, I guess what I'm trying to come at this with is, I don't... Do we have a term yet for what to call the Stern tables, you know, the post-DMD era Stern? What are we calling those? I don't know. 
Um, so that's why I'm kind of leaning towards calling it Spike 2 as a catch-all. Well, then you've got the other manufacturers who are also doing it as well. Like Spooky does it, and right. and Jersey Jack does it as well. So you can't really link it to a particular um, um, main pinball processing unit. But calling it post-DMD sounds a little flippant. Not right. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say, like, back, back box screen pinball. <laughs> but that that rolled even, off um, the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was so 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 fluid that everyone will use it, and pick it up immediately. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be like a three letter acronym, like um, video backbox pinball VBP or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it's a hard one to say. Or it it will probably actually take the form of PC pinball because mm. that's essentially what's powering these things. Mm -hmm. Like they're actually proper PCs. So because that's why that's not why I'm also figuring with that price point because you're going to have to have two monitors. Um, you're yep. going to. And you're going to have to have a beefier main board to yep. run to run that back monitor as well. So, like, I think yeah, this probably... isn't running off of Android. It's going to have to run off of uh, something, something more. And that's why I'm also saying it's one table per cabinet because that's going to cover your licensing cost. Uh, that'll yep. cover the hardware cost, and that'll make Stern happy. <laughs> I, I think it, I, I honestly, and I and when I say eight hundred, I think that's the low point. I think oh, yeah, if that, you hit it between eight hundred and a thousand, that uh, you'd have people that would bite. I think that if you yeah, because if a, the pin is two thousand yeah, um, RRP, then if you made these one thousand, then and they weren't just all the pin titles. Um, I think you could probably actually ask two thousand for an f actual proper pinball table, like you know, like something directly after, um, like Aerosmith, for example, uh, as one of the tables. You know, if you had an Aerosmith um, pinball cabinet with just that table on, with the back glass art, but three quarter size, I think you could probably ask two thousand dollars. Ooh. for that table digitally because you've got to think about it like the the rip on a brand new pro is like six so yeah but then you figure that now you're in at that price point you can pretty handily go out and find a real pinball machine um what? <laughs> not not no, i'm not saying a, a stern but i'm saying no. an actual real pinball machine you're in now you're now within the realm of of quite a lot of those available on the market that you can get for that price point. That's why at a thousand bucks, it's in much Australia. more. Well, <laughs> we're talking U.S. dollars here, Jared. Um, yeah. At a thousand dollars U.S., uh, you're hard pressed to find any real pins at that price. Point. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. But hey, yeah. you know what? This is all just off it, your freaking rocket wild, talk. Crazy. <laughs> this is off your rocket talk. So don't even don't even count on this. But you know. Feel free to totally steal this idea free of charge from us, Stan, yes. and do it anyhow. Like, you know, that'd be sweet. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> so something else that then we th we thought about prediction wise. This is less prediction uh, because it's not prediction at all. This mm. falls into the category of what we would like to see. Yep. And this is going to be pretty much exclusively with. Zen because yeah. uh, like we say currently Magic Pixel is just doing now they're doing their deluxe tables and uh, Farsight's not really doing anything until we see these Tato tables that they're putting out for ad games but that's now you gotta have right. an ad games product to even be able to play it so mm -hmm. mass market consumability it pretty much falls on, on Zen's hands so what we wanted to uh, throw out there was what do we want to see come out table-wise from Zen in terms of DMD table, licensed DMD tables, unless, well, there's those three that aren't licensed that are I, still I available. I went no licensed. I, I went, went down too. Going, yeah. I, I went no licensed because that's like, because we, we have a category for licensed. Oh. See, Jared might not have uh, understood my thing, but that's okay. We're fine. So anyway, DMD an alphanumeric that we both want to see, and then an original licensed Zen pin uh, that we would like to see. Yeah. 
so an Jared. original licensed Zen pen as one of their own creations. Yes. Okay, yeah, I do. But it can be, but, but it can be a licensed property. Oh right, okay, but one yes, that's yeah. not currently out there. Correct. Hmm, okay, I'm gonna have to think of one on the fly because that's not what I got out of the. <laughs> 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 We had this conversation over text, and things can, you know, fast and furious over that way. So I'll start. I'll go ahead and start. Yeah. Uh, oh, caveat. Yes, we all know that we want Indiana Jones. That yeah, couldn't have been a choice. Wants it. Yeah. Caveat for me, as if you've been listening at all, you know, I desperately want NBA Fast Break, and I desperately want roller games. So, mm. no, I don't get to, because that'll just be my answer, and there's no fun in that. So it's got to be no. a different answer for me. For those. Yeah. Uh, so here he goes. For my DMT table that I would like to see in 2021, created by Zen, I got to go with Adam's family. I yeah. love Good Adam's choice. family and I love Pat Lawler tables. And I would really enjoy seeing uh, an enhanced version of that. So oh, yeah. seeing Fester in the chair reacting when it goes off, uh, seeing down on the apron, maybe Cousin It roaming around um i i don't want them to Think touch things hand. Table. I, I don't want them to touch his hand but that's just too oh no no <laughs> oh, so, so you reckon that 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 mechanical element of the table stays as it, it needs is. to stay as is but I, I don't maybe want having to change. or something like that running around sure i wouldn't mind the hand zipping about here and there um mm -hmm. when the when the power starts lightning or something coming from from the play field bottom yeah, I just think there's yeah. a lot of cool things that could be could be done with it on top of that it's just an exceedingly fun table and it is. i know we've it's already had it with sort of stackable modes in it as well like for its time it was great and I do agree with you. Zen will be able to do an amazing job with the visual extras. Yeah, and even though we already have been able to play it in Pinball Arcade, uh, visually it's not phenomenal. They didn't do a lot of contrast with uh, with everything. So with proper lighting, better graphics on it, uh, obviously Ooh, way physics. better physics. Mm. Um, do I care if they do the anniversary edition? Hey, if you want to do it, throw it in. That'd be lovely. But I'm, I'm fine with the plain Jane regular Adams family. So that's what I yeah. want. Yeah. DMD wise in 2021 from Zen. Jared, you go. Okay, so um, I went. Um, if we're going to go with um, DMD, that is um, not licensed. You only um, got three choices there. <laughs> that's right. So I'm, I'm going with Jackpot. For the DMD, I know that there's gambling references in it, um, etc. But I think it's the it's the better of the um, uh, the pinbot uh, argument. Pinbot versus jackpot. Obviously, you take the DMD yes. version, um, and it's it doesn't have any licenses attached. So therefore, you could do some pretty cool things with it, um, and it would be affordable just to pump out as as a title that's not licensed. So. Um, that was my pick for DMD. Um, I don't know whether I'll let I you should... go if, if if off the top of your head you know that one pops up that's licensed DMD that you would like to say I'll allow it. Yep. Okay, licensed DMD. I, I can't not say Twilight Zone. Okay. Um, Twilight Zone. It all like the amount of visual extras they could do in that table be pretty easy. They just do all the mods that are in the community at the moment because um, <laughs> there's thousands of them that you can put on that table. Um, but, you know, with it, it suffered so terribly from railroad physics in yes. Farsight. It was just horrible. Um, it would really benefit from some good Zen um, uh, Belly Williams physics. Because it's supposed to be a redonkulously hard table. It is. To get to it wizard is. mode on. And in TPA, you could get to wizard mode twice easily. Yep. <laughs> you just close your eyes and you get it yeah. so you know I'd expect that you know that would be the level of accessibility you get on like regular um, the zen physics uh, yeah zen physics mm -hmm. but when you switch on arcade or tournament physics yeah get get prepared for a drain fest because that's how the game plays and it would do it um, with the zen physics and you know they could have so that like where would we begin with the amount of visual extras they could do on that table there's so much there's yeah. so many things in that table they could bring to life. It would just be, it will be the almost the pinnacle of the releases, I think. 
And of course, uh, I would not be sad in the least because guess who made that table again? Pat Lawler. Pat Lawler. <laughs> it's it's the winning formula. Uh, so yeah, that that would be my pick. So to, what would be your be what would be your pick then for an alphanumeric that you hope appears in twenty twenty one? Again, because this was a season one table in um, Farsight, brighter pinbot. Um, Sherrod's got the pinbot fever going on. Jackpot yeah, I, and pin, but brighter pin, but brighter pin, but we want that trilogy. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, we can take it like a dual trilogy with um, pinbot and uh, brighter pinbot because they're sort of like the same thing. So, yeah. but you know, this is another one that has like just the most ridiculous vacuum ramp I've ever seen in a pinball machine on the Farsight version. It goes up there so fast that you'd think there was an accelerator man- magnet on that ramp, and it's not designed to be like that. You should really have to fight to get that thing to go up the ramp to um, be fair it, too when we first saw bright a pinball in pinball arcade and that was was that the first or second dlc pack i think yeah, that they did was, yes yeah. um the visuals we were all blown away we were like oh my god that looks phenomenal especially yeah. if you'd previously looked at it in their williams hall of fame collection yeah um but I think Zen could knock out the chrome look oh, of that table. And it needs it so badly. Yeah. And, you know, it needs the like the, the chase lights and the helmet and mm-hmm. you know, nice, nice, good environmental flashlights and stuff yeah. like that. Okay. Like it, it really does need a lot of love, that table. And again, they could do some really neat things with the bride on that table. Like she could be playing a key role in that table. Um, and really really nicely integrated um same goes on jackpot as well that the bride could actually feature quite nicely on that as well and it would look really really great so you know two solid um pinbot tables to choose from there i think what about your alpha Chris? well my alphas so i'm i'm torn and since i let you pick two on dmds i'm gonna pick two alphas <laughs> okay yeah go do it do um it. my first one is it's it's just kind of a go-to it's my first love uh whirlwind Oh yeah, and whirlwind. Oh, yes, we've we've right. talked about with whirlwind again. Another Pat Lawler. Yeah. What can I say? I'm sorry. Mm. Um, but we've talked about the visuals enhancements on whirlwind. That when you've got the 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 three discs spinning, I want to see little tornadoes, you know, uh, appear and debris and cows yeah. flying. Um, That'd be awesome. The lightning strikes, just whatever. There's all sorts of elementals that could be put into that uh, into that design. And that was a first season pinball arcade table that desperately needs a visual enhancement. There's clipping, there is uh, art that are not art, but pieces that are missing that are hidden behind something else, but you can sometimes catch it glitching through and whatever. Um, And the vacuum ramps on that are absolutely just insane strong (laughs) yeah like you can you can plunge the ball on that table and get it all the way around the upper loop. right like (laughs) that just does not ever happen in the game um so yeah it it is it is in desperate need of some zen love that one and then where i was torn though uh i really want centaur also because again i just think zen would kill it on the look um, yeah, just the high res really graphics. Get contrast. Yeah, oh, that yeah. contrast in that table is is the most important thing with that that game. Like you need to have such a almost like an HDR contrast between the whites mm-hmm. and the blacks on that table, don't you? And it's such like, a pure pinball yeah. experience. Uh, no ramps, um, lots but of drop targets, just multi ball. Uh, yeah. but it's got the vertical uh, lineup for drop targets. Uh, I just it, it is. It may have come out in 1981, but it is still an exceedingly fresh table. The interesting thing about what I've noticed in some of the later Belly Williams tables from Zen is when you put it into an enhanced mode, they've added in subtle stereo effects into the table. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you pick it up, mm-hmm. but but you can hear that they've added in, like for the extra visuals and stuff like that, they put an overlay over the original mono soundtrack right and it changes the game so much and you could do that with um centaur really easily and still have almost like the um the that underlying sort of tone 
um, the, the core soundtrack, but put a whole lot of different sound effects and special effects over the top, just bring the table to life. It would be amazing if they did that. That would be a great title to include yeah. for sure. I'd, I would love it. And then we will reach our final category, which is, have you had time to think or do you need me to go first on this one, Jared? To give Definitely you an go idea. first. I'm going to okay. have to think very, very fast. So, <laughs> so this would be one other license could Zen get a hold of to do Zen Originals with. In the past, you know, they've done Walking Dead. They did Portal. They've done the Balls of Fury with those Fox animated titles. Um, that's kind of the the impetus what I'm thinking of. Obviously, they're doing Mandalorian. I would like to see one more from them. And I think the timing is perfect for this, especially since, and again, we've I've mentioned this before, uh, Netflix show coming out soon and based on it. I want Cowboy Bebop. And I want... <clears throat> I know that music is expensive <laughs> and that would be an issue because music makes up half the show on that. If they could yeah. just license the one theme song to, you know, at ball launch to hear, okay, three, two, one, let's jam. And then you, you know, the ball launches and it goes, ah, that'd be beautiful. Um, that would be pretty good. I just think that that would be a phenomenal title to license. And again, since Netflix has got their uh, live action show coming out uh, in 2021, the timing would be perfect to do that with. That would be a pretty nice fit for the Asian market as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, like, absolutely. Quite nicely for absolutely. that new direction that Zen had. So that would be a, um, a logical fit. I think my one that I just came um, up with off the top of my head may not fit the Asian market but it has so much social capital that I think it would be a pretty pretty good home run to hit, particularly given that there's a movie coming out in 2021 for it, and that is Top Gun. Hmm. So, we've never had an official Top Gun table. That's right. Like We've had an F-14 Tomcat, which is basically Top Gun. Right, and then uh, there was that hideous, airborne. godly premiere. Uh, oh, no, there was... Oh, um, what was it? Wild Goldwing or something like that? It's Goldwing. There's also Operation Thunderbolt as well, um, right. which uh, was um, um, which was kind of the same. It was definitely a, a fighter jet themed game, but and then the one you mentioned was the uh, Capcom, yeah, Airborne, Airborne. Capcom, yeah. Airborne, which is which was quite similar. It was more like an air show themed game, but still very much fighter jet. So Top Gun is an interesting one, don't you think? Because they could do a movie tie-in with it. Um, they wouldn't necessarily have to like make a Top Gun movie table. They can make a Top Gun inspired table using the brand. Um, and you could have you could have all the tropes that you love in Top Gun with a bit of um, uh, uh, Danger Zone and all those sort of really good tracks in it. A um, bit of Hans Zimmerman, solid soundtrack work to be done in there, which wouldn't be easy to get, but you know, whatever. They got, they got cash coming out of their ears at the moment, right? So, <laughs> so Top Gun, uh, like ramps could be incredible. You could have fighter jets flying around the play field. You could have you, dog fight modes. Oh, you could have, a, the, you could have a, a video mode where you're playing volleyball. Oh. <laughs> With your shirt off. That's right. exactly right. right. Uh, you know, there are so many different things you could do with that license. And, you know, to this day, Top Gun is still a movie I enjoy watching because it's just so well shot. Um, and the the actual dogfight scenes in it are incredible. And I think it would it really would translate really well to pinball, particularly Zen. Zen Zen's brand of digital pinball and its visual effects. So sign me up for a Top Gun pin next year all right well yeah well, let's see if let's see if zen is listening and uh how already has that in the works or not mm. you never know <laughs> i know that i've been harping about cowboy b-ball long enough that it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility <laughs> um, that's right or like think of the other think of the other you know themes that would be popular for uh, a new asian audience uh, there's so many titles in anime that you could choose, like Akira. I mean, you could do, you know, Last Airbender. You could do... Oh, yeah. Uh, Legend uh, of Korra. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's lots of different really solid themes out there that you could use. Um, so, yeah, the, the, like I think, you know, you're scratching the, the surface with your prediction there. I think, you know, we would probably expect a lot of those 
crossover Western European, like Western um, uh, titles that are also, you know, got their origins and got their strength in the Asian market. Yeah. You know, that sort of stuff. I firmly I'll... believe that, that they will be doing an anime based table. I don't know yeah. what, I don't know based on what property, but I think that they absolutely will I be doing that. You can almost, I'd say, you know, to add on to 2021, I, I reckon you could probably count on that as as a 2021 theme um maybe later on in the year but i i reckon we're going to see an anime table that or zen is going to make a pachinko table <laughs> a pachinko table oh yeah gambling but, <laughs> like, there's there's no way of getting around like pachinko is not being a gambling table um but yeah that'd be fun though yeah <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> oh. just just the madness of like a, a thousand hundred balls right? just running around the table at once. Oh, your poor video card. <laughs> oh, it would be screaming. It would absolutely be screaming. I mean, that makes me wonder, has anybody done, what was it, uh, Hyper... What's it called? Hyperpin? Uh, Hyperball. Hyperball? Hyperball. Has anybody done Hyperball. that on Visual Pinball? Oh, I'm not aware. Um, I, I don't think so. Although I don't know so either. So... <laughs> but yeah so that's a really interesting picks there chris like i reckon there's a lot of possibility in those picks i think so uh, and i think they'd be they'd all be great like i don't think we neither of us disagree that they'd be all great additions to the platform no so, I, w I, I certainly wouldn't be like ew really that's what you picked you wanted my, my little pony table why uh um, yeah so yeah <laughs> exactly all right well, cool. I think there, folks, is uh, is what you can look forward to in 2021. <laughs> mm. A bunch of nonsense some... predictions from us and some wishes from us. Yeah, that's right. Is that, you know, hopefully that'll happen. I or... mean, because it can't be any worse than 2020, right? No, it really can't. No. <laughs> like, they could release literally anything and it'll be great <laughs> compared to 2020. Yes. All right, well, that wraps up our show for today. Uh, again, if you have ideas for tables that you want me to uh, play live um, and any specific rules that you think that I should abide by while doing those, I will be doing that next week on Saturday at our... Uh, uh, well, since we don't our go live, it's not... A, it, since we don't go live, it's not our typical recording time. It's our typical recording time that we record but not typical for when you would view so anyway yeah. it'd, be, it'd be 2 p.m on uh saturday the 18th it's when we used to go live it is when we used to go live yeah and right. and and if i can get the technical glitches all worked out maybe we'll go live again soon but mm. until i get those <laughs> worked out that uh, we're not suffering with them live on air with you guys uh making it look like the true dog and pony show that we don't want it to be uh, yeah <laughs> We just keep the dog, the dogs and the ponies off air now. Yes, <laughs> it's still the same, but <laughs> right, right. So anyway, yeah. that'll that'll be next week, and then uh, after that, uh, we'll probably be seeing you guys after Christmas with a show, uh, and hopefully Probably. there'll be some new news regarding shipments and such. That would be good. That would be good would be nice to, to get some dates associated with these things, right? Yes. Uh, but until then, we just want to give a big old thank you for sticking with us, for watching the program. Uh, for Please continue posting comments on YouTube. I try and answer every single comment uh, that gets posted because uh, we do value engaging with our audience and want to yeah. continue doing with that. Uh, or you can always seek us out on Twitter and drop comments there because we're active on that front too. Yeah. But until next time after Christmas, which we don't know what we're going to talk about, except for we know for sure we will always talk about Jared's favorite things. Stuff and things. Until then, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.